This show is brought to you by Rotary International. Service above self. Welcome to a new show of Alhon TV and we are here on the BC Food Services Expo and I've got two very interesting guests here. Hi, Donna Hello, and Mars. Garth. Very <laughs> pleased to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Donna, maybe you just quickly explain where you just came from and uh, what do you do? <laughs> well, uh, where do I start? I came from Toronto mm. and I am a chef and a restaurateur there in Toronto. I also am the uh, chair of the board of directors of the Canadian Restaurant and Food Services Association who sponsors this show. Oh, so you're a very important person then? I, I would like to think so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you, Gal? Well, actually, I just came from Torrey Pines, where the, the PGA Golf Tournament was, as I was at the National Restaurant yeah. Association board meeting. Yeah. But I'm originally from Toronto, mm -hmm. and I'm president and CEO of the uh, Canadian Restaurant Food Service Association. Before we get now to the various cultures here in British Columbia and in Ontario, uh, but that says already a lot, uh, golf, no? Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we are very relaxed here, over here, right? Uh, we know how to use the time. And uh, we're going to look uh, quickly into a small clip about uh, this event, uh, this year. At the, the BC Food Services Expo and then come back. Wonderful. Right. Let's see what they got here on the BC Food Services Expo. Fresh and hot. My name is Thomas Dietzel. I am a culinary judge here with the BC Chefs Association. We have our annual culinary competitions. And over the next two days, actually yesterday and today, we have three different kinds of competition. We have actually a junior hot competition, and that includes a lot of apprentices, um, people in high school to actually go into the culinary teachings. And the second competition we have is actually with um, chefs, with uh, professional chefs called the Chef of the Year competition and it's done with black boxes and the third uh, competition is a Chinese competition actually uh, culinary uh, competitions with Chinese chefs cooking Chinese food and the idea is actually that we bring the Chinese and the Western cuisine somewhat together so we are looking at uh, fusion actually we can say fusion between Chinese food and Western food so actually we see at the culinary competition with the Chinese, we see actually a little bit uh, traditional Chinese style of cooking with Western sauces, for example. All of a sudden, you see a beurre blanc or butter sauce. And then on the other hand, we actually have a black box competition called the Chef of the Year, which is um, more or less well-known chefs from um, BC, British Columbia. A lot of are uh, from Vancouver. And that is a black box competition where the uh, chefs actually don't know really what they're going to cook. So we put into the black box, we give them, for example, some protein, and we give them a duck breast, um, give them some um, galan, some um, wild mushrooms, and then usually a tricky, a tricky ingredient, you know, a, a gooey duck, uh, or maybe some, um, some vegetables which they are actually not very familiar with. And then they have 30 minutes time to actually present a full dish. And that is the Chef of the Year competition. And then we also have um, the juniors, again, um, students from culinary schools and so on, who are actually in the midst of an apprenticeship program. And they're testing the waters of competition for the very first time. And uh, I think we have 16 different schools um, representative. Welcome again, we're back. So what do you think of the clip? So it's kind of interesting, the BC Food Services Expo um, has a lot to offer. Why is this green wave so big? I mean, people talked about, let's say 25 years ago about this already, green food, organic food and that kind of stuff. And uh, 
nobody really uh, took it serious. Why today? Well, I think today we see, uh, our, we're much more aware of our carbon footprint, for starters, than we were 25 years ago. And the awareness is there. Also, we have um, our well-being and our health to think of as well. We have an aging population here in North America, in the West, uh, for that matter. And so people's health and wellness is very important now. So anything that's going to impact our health and our wellness is, is important to, to the consumer. And, you, and Don is right, it's driven by the consumer, but also driven, driven by the new chefs and the new community. They're driving it as well. And we did a survey of, of the coming trends, eat local, sustainable, uh, healthy living, uh, uh, all those things are a major trend that we see coming over the last, um, I don't know, three or four years, yes, and, and not just, just here in the United momentum. States. And it's yeah. a whole industry, no? A whole, oh, whole industry. industry. Whole industry. Yeah, so... Uh, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time for our industry, uh, for our agriculture, and just for our time and place in history. You know, again, and, and, and Donna's is a pioneer, and somewhere, it's right, right from the farm right through to... to our, our restaurants. So the whole agri-food policy is a major issue. We're demanding what we want. We try. We're the R and D for for the food industry. Yeah. We're the ones where people learn about what's happening in trend. We just launched uh, uh, a conserve program as well, and that's how you, how can you be saving energy and being environmentally friendly. And we have 90 different types of programs, and they look at the return on investment because it's a good investment to be environmentally uh, and sustainable uh, sound. I remember. 30 years ago, when, there's, when we suddenly saw something like a skateboard, we didn't know exactly what it is, yeah. and then we heard, oh, California is developing these kind of things, or, or whatever, you know, new type of technologies. Um, is there a specific, would you say, yeah, for example, California is exactly that type of state where these kind of trends come well, from, I, or British Columbia I will Canada. say British Columbia. I will mm -hmm. say John Bishop, yeah. uh, he's, he was uh, dealing with eat local, sustainable uh, food in the 70s. He's been recognized for that. He's a pioneer. And we have a lot of pioneers here in, uh, mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Don't you, wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely, Garth. And I think that in Canada, we have also our migration. Uh, people come from all around the world to make Canada their home. So they bring with them their agricultural heritage. Yeah. The return, I call this uh, thing we're going through right now, and it's very good, the return to the table. So we see people want to get back to the table. They want to be engaged, eat good food food that comes from the farm down the road and if you stop and think about that's very much a part of the agricultural heritage of people coming from Southeast Asia or Europe and they influence a lot of the things that we do here in, yeah. in a very young country Canada. And, and that leads to another there's a fusion of things that you wouldn't think would be happening like fish tacos uh, or you know the, 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 there's a blending of different foods and we see it a lot in Toronto and Vancouver in particular. Yeah, Vancouver is fabulous. I, you know, it's quite a great city. Yeah it's fabulous. We love being here. We're very yeah. relaxed. <laughs> very relaxed. That's why I said with the golf you know I mean on Friday afternoons usually it's ice fishing in winter no? <laughs> well, where I'm from. <laughs> yes, that's right. but, but yes but you look at the show I mean the yeah. show has been a huge success success uh, and a lot of buzz a lot of people come to figure out those trends to talk to other world known chefs and Canadian known chefs they come here and we have chef competitions no I've, I've heard that in Edmonton since we talked just about Calgary are you familiar a little bit with Edmonton yes, yes. yeah yes. it's very cold there right can uh, be. <laughs> yeah, we've heard that too yeah I know climate change it might get warmer now a little bit but I've heard they got a lot of time uh, I've heard actually they have a quite interesting food culture. They do. Very yes. much. Yeah, because they, they, they can't go out so much. They are more, I don't want to say they're couch potatoes in that sense, but they, uh, you know, they have There's to a home figure sense. out new There's ideas. There's a home sense. Home there. sense. Yes, very much so. And I think that weather, certainly weather would, would influence that decision. People staying in their homes, very uh, cocooning, I guess yeah. is the word I'm looking I for. I lived in Winnipeg and Regina and, and uh, we've done surveys and the number one activity in Canada to do with your family and friends is to go to a restaurant. Yeah. And so when it is cold, uh, you want to, you, it, they, they, they visit more, mm -hmm. they celebrate more, very much like Germany in some respects. You know, when you go to a special place and, and, and it's warm and it's cozy, there's it's a very now. much... There's a but. There's, there's a but. There's a but. There's a but, there's a but now. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> in Germany, they let you eat for three, four hours. Here you go into a restaurant, 
it's maybe they calculate in maximum two hours and then they come with a question uh, can I bring you anything else and when you say no even without asking them they bring you already the the invoice for the for the food well, Isn't that a little bit, it's, it's that's true ridiculous. it's true but but there are certain places if you go to James Joyce pub in yeah. Calgary you can settle in there for the full day yeah okay. and you really can you there's kick a, your boots up you, you, you can boots there's up. A, there's certain places that are well that's cowboy that. mentality yeah they're, they're <laughs> easy going I well guess. you know <laughs> and, and we're so our our uh, lifestyle is so fast-paced here yeah. in North America now you talk as a Toronto person right <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not in Vancouver. No, 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 no even in the trends. Uh, uh, and Donna's right. I mean, they were talking about the trends and it's convenience. One yeah. of the other big trends is convenience. Yeah. Well, people want less time uh, in, in the restaurant or at the table because they want to get to all those other things they enjoy doing. So the consumer, again, dictates that if you don't get the bill to me fast enough, right. then they're unhappy. So better to get the bill quicker. By all means, I would say most hospitality providers in the country would say, well, if you're not ready to go, then so be it. We'd love to have you stay. Mm -hmm. I know I, I speak for myself and many other restaurateurs. But uh, the consumer would like to have that check fast. We've got to get going. Yeah. Certainly yeah, in true. Toronto, we love to work. As a matter of fact, <laughs> again, they were showing you just uh, earlier the trends and, and the fast trends are... Um, snacks in the morning and snacks in the afternoon so people want to eat when they want to eat so it's not just uh, breakfast lunch and supper you know a lot of people say uh, it should go back to the point where the family gets together mm -hmm. yes. on a, especially on a Sunday evening where they have the, the, the meal together and can communicate it's a social thing a social aspect also so not just to feed the stomach but you I know think, I think but the snacks I, I think don't right. they kill that but there's two two sides I mean one is with family the other is with friends yeah and often friends get together for a coffee and the, the coffee is becoming a meeting place mm -hmm. and there's so that those are we're seeing those types of trends well, as well but that's because we we can't afford any more uh, offices like we had in former times people meet in uh, coffee yeah, places well, they're, yeah they're, sure it becomes their, really? their uh, home offices mobile offices true. yes the other it's, thing I think really that if you look really at the family has changed a lot too. Yeah. Uh, the modern family is very different than what it was 30 or 50 years ago where you, you, you have uh, the parents at the head of the table, the grandparents would be there, uh, exactly. they probably lived in the home, yes. and you'd maybe have four, five, six, eight children. Yeah. Um, some well, that's a Catholic family. <laughs> well, that's, that's Irish when they Catholic, said, yeah. Italian, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, looking at the family, now we see young people in their 30s, early 30s they live yeah. alone they have a dog <laughs> yeah. uh, you know to, to sit down by themselves is not the kind of experience that they would like to have as opposed yeah. to going and being in a restaurant or cafe with a group of their friends yeah. so these things all you know these things change in our society and we adjust with those changes as so so we have got this this movement of um, by uh, by local yes and then we have this movement of um, fast food, but good fast food, I mean, healthy yeah. fast food. Yeah, that's right. But again, is that contra, uh, because fast food would mean you have to pre-produce already a lot. And that means, uh, on the other hand, it's, it can't, can't, can't be fresh in a way that... Well, you know, I think with quick service, you know, people food. want to know, they want to know what they're going to get when they go there. They don't want to have different every time yeah. so they certain when they know a certain brand certain quick service that they like they know they're gonna get it no matter where they are anywhere in the world and so for some of those quick service places and then there's others that are um, it's fresh but but, but quick mm. and and uh, they you know they make sure they buy the, the highest quality products and so there's a movement right through from quick service to full service to fine dining that we're finding and again it's been driven as Donna said by the consumer mm -hmm. the consumers demanding that if, it, if you don't cater to what they need and we were talking they want convenience and yeah. local and good quality, and good, quality and, good value. and good value if you don't get that you're not in business now good quality good value <laughs> I have to compare with Europe the labeling um, what kind of difference do you see with the labeling compared to let's say Germany well, I'll even compare even to the United States. Yeah. The United States, they're trying to say, let's put it all on, on menu boards, they say. Here, we're working. As a matter of fact, we've introduced an informed dining where we want to get the information to our consumer the way they want to get it. And really, again, the innovator has been BC. Okay, now. And yes. now we're working with BC and we've got rolling out the program from here. That's, uh, yeah, because BC seems to be the innovative 
drive for the country. Well, you know, a lot of no, major uh, It's because brands. you're a little more relaxed. Yeah. I think that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, a, a lot of... Those ideas you, pop you said R&D. I mean, a lot of, uh, yes. uh, uh, you know, uh, I would say tests are probably done here with consumers how they react and that kind of stuff. But look what you have. You've got the sea yeah. right here. Yeah. You've got wine yeah. right here. You've got, you know, great produce right here. Yeah, but, so but 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 if you look even at the States, I've noticed that if they want to check out the, a foreign country, the first thing they do is Seattle, let's say, yeah, for example, the coffees. Mm -hmm. Don't want to mention our name, but everyone it knows. Sure the first place they checked out was Vancouver, I guess, no? Okay, it's close by, Seattle and Vancouver. But um, it, it seems to be, if Vancouver accepts it, then they look into further markets. Well, there's fusion of food and there's also a fusion of people. Yeah. East meaning west, mm -hmm. yeah. it means a big difference. Yes. And, and you got the States and Canada. There's a lot of things that are coming together. And I will say Toronto too. I mean, I'm very impressed with just the culinary practices and just uh, different types of neighborhoods just based on certain foods in Toronto is, is unbelievable. Yeah. It's just yes, right now I would say the whole country has a great culinary movement underfoot. Uh, I do a lot of traveling uh, working with on behalf of the federal government and I go to different countries and cook and talk about Canadian agriculture. Mm -hmm. Even as a Canadian I'm always amazed to discover that some, I, I think 80% of all chickpeas consumed yeah. or lentils consumed in India are actually grown From in Saskatchewan. From Saskatchewan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by Dutch farmers. Yes, yeah. This is right. And Moose Jar. And Durum. Durum, from, Durum for, for the spaghettis? Right. For, for pasta. For, for Italy, it comes right. also from Saskatchewan. And huh? soy in Japan. You know, the Japanese uh, market is very, um, really smitten with our soy yeah. products. So it's it's very interesting time for Canada right now. We should promote that much we more. We should. No? Yeah. I mean, seriously, we, a lot of people worldwide, I think, don't know that well, you know, the source food comes from. Didn't. What would you say if you go to Europe? Uh, what is, on your last trip, for example, what, is there each time something which you bring back to Canada? What you learned from the Europeans, or would you say, ooh, this is something which we would never ever do here in Canada? Well, I, is there something which you would pick I, out? I, I'm sure there are things that I would pick out, absolutely. I mean, we, uh, we have very strong European roots here in Canada mm. that go back a long way and have influenced uh, the way we eat, the way yeah. we live. And I think it's important for us to remember as Canadians that we're a relatively young mm. country. And we are a very small population of people scattered across a huge physical landscape. So, you know, Garth has made this point before, we're, we're really defined by our geography yeah. here in Canada. Uh, so I would like to think, yes, I come back with some European sensibilities, but I also bring some North American sensibilities to my visits over there as well. I, I think too, uh, with Germany, and I've been, I've been over there, you know, there, and I've been to Europe quite a bit, you get an appreciation of the pairing of foods with wine, the pairing of food with beer. And you see here now, again, the other side, we haven't talked, we're talking food, but all the domestic beer and, and new... Yeah, let's uh, not get into the liquor laws. Oh, no, no, yeah, let's not that. talk about yeah, the liquor so laws. <laughs> but if, but if you're looking at all, all the different <laughs> brew pubs that are coming yeah. up, and, and you get that sense, and I know people from Germany would really appreciate that. Like, there's a, there's yeah. a lot of that, and pairings yeah. now, you know? But, but uh, I guess uh, I can imagine a lot of Germans didn't appreciate it, that the microbrewery was not accepted in the salt building, huh? just to go into a very local thing. Have yes. you heard about that one? Yes. They wanted to build a from Calgary actually, mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't go through. I think. That's our job. That's yeah. what we're. That's what, that's what our association is about. Is yeah. really to. We're, we're, we're going to have the deputy premier here tomorrow. Oh, I see. And when we walk politicians through there, they usually go, "I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about the size and breadth of the industry and the contribution and that the we contribution. make to the economy." We're the first-time employer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. You know, and 50% of Canadians have, have worked in a restaurant or have a family member worked in a restaurant. Now, speaking of restaurant, Mildred's Temple Kitchen, that's, that's yes. you're the executive chef 
Yes, and proprietor. Been, yes, I do. And a bottle Owner. washer. <laughs> so, so who's Mildred? Is this your grandma or something? Uh, no, Mildred. My original... <laughs> Sounds German, by the way. <laughs> Mildred Pierce was the uh. my first restaurant, and it was named after the uh, movie Mildred Pierce, which was a movie starring Joan Crawford in 1946. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know about it. I yeah, must... Well, you must watch it sometimes. Oh, yes, a absolutely. Lot of, a lot of restaurant uh, innuendo in the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and now Mildred's Temple. How? Yeah. What, what, why is it the name why Temple? Why is that the name? Yeah, well, well do you Mildred, feel like... Mildred is our mm -hmm. namesake. Yes. She, she, she yeah. oversees everything. And we think of our temple as our place of... We worship flavor in our temple. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, an homage to good food and good hospitality. And, and I think, you know, that's what people are seeking out. And you are yourself still active as a, as a, as a chef or just I, overview it? I, uh, I mostly overview, but every now and then I roll up my sleeves and grab my knife off the wall and start chopping onions. I see. Uh, She's being modest. Be she was representing Canada at the Olympics. She's well, been but, different places. But this is so. the point. I mean, yeah. the, is it true that you, you need to always keep the contact to yes, the groundwork absolutely so that you can you know people also you stay in touch yeah and, pe and also people uh, take you serious seriously for what you're talking about yes. no? that's I think very important yes. yeah and for me I'm a I'm the professional consumer yeah you the guards on the receiving I'm, 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 I'm they, the they love having me in the restaurant <laughs> you are more on the business side no? yes I'm uh, on the business and pushing the, well pushing the image I mean if people go on our website crfa.ca yeah. We have, a, we have a video called I Am A Restaurant. And you get to see the people like Donna who started from scratch. Some people started as dishwashers and worked their way up to some running billion dollar companies, others having their own restaurant and love and then they're employing people. Uh, and it really is important. A healthy community is a healthy, you need a healthy restaurant sector. Yeah. And that's what we're about. So we try and tell uh, po the politicians and uh, decision makers that we're part of the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, we're part of the solution for healthy living. Mm -hmm. We're part of the solution for youth employment, tourism, economy. As a matter of fact, we're the canaries in the, in the, in the mine shaft where uh, finance minister and, and, and bank governors want to talk to us because our guys know what's happening in the economy first because people withdraw from restaurants when times are yes. tough and they come in when, they're, when times are better and we have a very good pulse of the economy. Okay, we talk now a lot about um, adults. What about the children? How do, how should parents behave towards their children and their food habits? And I think this is part of being informed and, and one of the trends is looking for options for children that are healthy and it's definitely coming and I think Donna, you know, as you said before, uh, that's where it starts. It starts with the family and starts with children. And Absolutely. And uh, children uh, today haven't grown up on the farm as kids did, you know, 50 or 100 years ago. Yeah. And they're very interested in knowing where their food comes from. Uh, they really can't make the connection between a chicken walking in a barnyard and a uh, fish or sorry chicken fingers on the plate yeah. you know that connection is lost so by bringing that connection back that education piece they have a better understanding so do the schools work on that for example the schools, schools, schools school? are working they're on that to. they're starting to do that again the uh, municipalities the provinces and the federal government there's heightened awareness uh, that we have to do a better job educating our children when it comes to making the right choices about the food that they eat. And, and again, uh, you know, lastly, one, the, the coming trend, if you look at community colleges, one of the fastest growing curriculums is into the culinary schools, mm -hmm. into uh, serving and into the restaurant management side. So that uh, don't underestimate the impact of uh, the food station. Uh, yeah, so I thank you very I'm, much too. Thank you, it was a pleasure Garth. being here, lots yeah. of fun. I really thank you very much, Donna. All right, <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And we've got our own website, ahontv.com. And uh, we'll see you uh, back next week. Bye-bye.